Wow, okay. That just crashed and burned like wow. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> let's see okay at least i can get that re reconnected all right let's where's my face cam i think that's the only thing we lacked let's let's try to get this face cam cracking <laughs> maybe <laughs> Maybe, please. Can I have my face cam back? No. It says no. We're not allowed. <laughs> I 
I am, I am waiting on NVIDIA broadcast to, uh, to give me my face cam back. But, I mean, it's not like my face cam is the most beautiful thing. But, uh, <laughs> uh, I thank you all for coming back to see me. Uh, I'm going to spend just a couple of minutes trying to get my face cam to work. But if it doesn't, we'll, uh, we'll just, uh, We'll find a different way to make it work. Because yay in video broadcast. No, we don't care about Stream Deck stuff. No, we don't care about that. Remind me later. And we do need Lumia. If you never use Lumia, I highly suggest it. We'll just have to imagine you have a beautiful face. I do have a beautiful face. My beard is awesome. Because my beard helps hide my face. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get this started again. NVIDIA broadcast is what is responsible for making my Brio or Logitech Brio 4K look like a DSLR. <laughs> that is a. <laughs> so if you've never used NVIDIA broadcast and you're a streamer, I do highly suggest it, especially for the noise suppression. It is next level. It is. Really, really awesome. My wife can literally vacuum the floor right behind me, and you would never hear it. Uh, it, it is that good. Let me see, where is just straight up Brio? Do I have a Brio just straight up? There it is. Okay. But I can't see where to put it. Oh, I see it. Okay. Whoa, it's really big. Okay. So we're going to have to do some adjusting. So this is going to look really weird. So I apologize about that. But I am trying to get it fixed. So let's transform uh, fit to screen, which is not exactly how that's supposed to look. So let's open that up that way. Oh boy. Ooh, that's, that's bad. Where, where am I? Oh, there I am. <laughs> okay. So we'll just do that. And then we'll just take that and move that like that. And... Oh, dear. Okay. Well, what do we do with it? Okay, that is not going to work.
Is this why people have like YouTube managers and stream managers to do like this this shit for them? Ha <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't think that's still quite quite right. Let's make that a little taller. Am I still in the frame? Not quite. All right, but we're working on it. Let's see. Hey, there we go. Now we've got some height. Okay. So let's do you maybe like that. I don't know. Such weirdness. Let me know if you're a if you're a streamer and you've encountered this uh, this kind of weirdness. Uh, oh, that is not right. It is the forehead stream. It's the full by full by forehead stream. Oh, yeah, that is totally not right. Oh. I just I just want me in the shot. Hey, there we go. Okay. I'm going to call that good. It's it's good enough. Because <laughs> I just want to play some pinball and drink more beer. <laughs> this is the entire reason some people have kids. Oh, that sounds good. Look into it. <laughs> they need to hurry and figure out how to stream. Uh, all right. So, cool. I think... Uh, I think we're back. I think. Looks like we got flippers going on. We've got a back glass. All right. Things are working again. We're back. All right. Is my voice echoey? I hope it's not. It seems like it's correct to me. So we'll just go ahead and delete that. We'll put that back on. Toggle full screen. And then I need my audio mixer and my Discord chat. Sweet. All right. So I think we're back, ready to stream. Woo! <laughs> For those of you who were left, I appreciate you staying. Thank you so much. <laughs> Cammy, you are not far off the mark. Kids are perfect. Like a, like a five-year-old kid can diagnose and correct your stream no time flat. <laughs> so, let's play something else. Because uh, as fun as that was, I don't want to anger the community too much. Let's go with Tron. There we go. All right. 
Who knows something about Tron? And I do really need to get a color ROM for Tron. Oh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but if you have had as much beer as I have. Mm. <laughs> you got to make room for more, baby. All right, let's go. Do we got quarters in this bad boy? We do. We're ready to go. Let's play. Oh, and we drain instantly. Oh, is reaction time slow down? Ooh. Maybe we need to pretend like it's bullet time and really slow it down. Okay. No, and we drain. Double drain, two, two in a row. Are we on ball three? Man, that sucks balls. Yes, we are. All right, we'll just chalk that up to a practice game. We just finished some tech support issues. Uh, Cammy, thank you very much for sticking with me and all of the rest of the peeps who stuck with me. And that game is over with the quickness. All right. Hopefully, uh, my readout says 60 frames a second. 12% CPU usage. Mm. It looks like we're having a good stream. Okay. With the exception of that ridiculously dumb score. Oh, there is something missing. Oh, well, that was just no bueno. I know what's missing. And Sage Gamer and Dustman3090, thank you very much for the follows. It is appreciated. There we go. I thought we were missing something. So this month, for the month of March, I am trying out, uh, what, what is this called? Uh, pretzel, pretzel, that, that's right. Man, with all this beer I'm drinking, a pretzel would be delicious right now. With the with the big salt uh, uh, the the big salt crystals on it, you know, not 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 the little like table salt, like the the big crunchy salt crystals on a pretzel, dark brown on the outside, kind of kind of crispy, hard to bite into, but then on the inside, like super chewy and doughy. Ooh, with the big salt crystals on the outside and maybe like a little cheese dip or even just some mustard. Oh, pretzels sound so good. Does anybody out there enjoy pretzels as much as I do? I mean, you know, spending half of my young life in Germany, pretzels are kind of a thing. Oh, man. This table has the best music. <laughs> um, it has amazing music, especially the ODST soundtrack. But uh, no, it's not music. 
it's not uh, missing. I just have it turned down low because it's, uh, you know, what what freaking time is it? Uh, it's almost four in the morning. It's three minutes to four in the morning. So uh, I'm trying not to uh, blast this table too loud because, uh, you know, I am married. I want to stay married. <laughs> I want, ooh, nice combo. I want my life, my wife to still like me in the morning. Ow. Oh, wow, it's almost 8 p.m. here. Yeah, it's uh, two minutes to four in the morning here. And usually I'm streaming at like 10.30 or 11 o'clock. And I'll stream for like an hour, maybe two hours. Three at the longest, and I've been streaming since 11 o'clock, and it's four in the morning. Now, of course, my timer says that I've only been streaming for 21 minutes, but, you know, we, we were doing easily four and a half hours before then, uh, before my stream crashed. So that's gonna, that's gonna F with my numbers, but you know what? It's not about numbers. Okay, let's be real. It is about numbers, <laughs> but um, I don't. I don't really care about them too much, you know. I mean, let's be real here. It's a pinball stream, and there's only like two pinball streamers who actually make a living streaming pinball. The rest of us, the rest of the pinball streamers are doing it merely because we want to share uh, the thing that we love with all of you. Ow. Anybody who says that they're streaming pinball to pay the bills, either they're living in their mom's basement <laughs> um, or they're just lying to you. It's just straight up. Ooh. Get around there. Where did it go? I went that way. Oh, and straight through the pop bumpers and then drain. Ah, such a sweet combo. And my three vampires are blaring, so all I hear is medieval madness and my voice. <laughs> but is my voice better than Tina Fey's, who, if you didn't know, is the voice of the, uh, she's the female voice actor for Medieval Madness. I was surprised to learn that. I was like, really? That's Tina Fey? Awesome. So 4.69, um, not a great score. So, um, now, Part of that could be attributed to being 10 beers in and working on 11 and 12. Um, that could be the reason. But I hate to blame it on the beers. So let's see if we can get better than 4.69 million. Okay, so we're over a million. So we got a little bit of work to do. Oh, and we drain. Ah, we got a mil and a half. Tina Fey, who's that? What? <laughs> she's nobody. She's she's nobody. She's not. It's not like she's famous. She's she's just some broad. Uh, didn't have a job. They found her on the street and was like, "Hey, do you want to voice a pinball machine?" And she was like. Yeah, I got nothing else better to do. Oof. Oof. The way that I'm playing, it might actually take uh, take a second to... Uh... <laughs> All right. So we got four million. 
We still didn't get to our goal. All right. So let's play like we actually know what we're doing. Oh, <laughs> that might be harder <laughs> than what I think. Oh, so uh, please tell me in chat if you've been 10 beers in or maybe a dozen, what were your scores like? I want to know just as a frame of reference, because I know some people play better juiced up. Some people it's game over. <laughs> I want to know where I rank up. Am I game over? Like, boy, you better start talking a whole lot more because your pinball sucks. God, we are in that multi ball. Oh no, we drained all three. Holy crap. But at least we're 6.7. So we're getting better. Shit, <laughs> caps lock. I'm super surprised to find out she did the voices for Medieval Madness 2. But it only makes it more awesome. Yeah, exactly. Ah, don't worry about that caps lock. Like, I have so few rules in my stream. Like, as long as you're not, like, uh, blatantly racist or, or, or just some, like, just some weird-ass shit. Like, I don't really care. <laughs> like, especially this time of night. Like, if you got kids watching this, and I'm streaming at four o'clock in the morning. Like that's your fault. That that's on you. Now, of course, where you're from, Cammy, it's eight in the evening. So there could very well be kids uh, watching this uh, at this time of night. So I have a choice to make when that happens, right? I can be like in other parts of the world. There could totally be kids watching this. So. I need to be careful. Or I could just be like, you know what? That sounds like a them problem. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think is the right decision? Should it be like, hey, you know what? They show rated R movies in the daytime. If you let your kids watch it, that's a you problem. Now, granted, if you were in Astro Nicey's stream last night, this is um, a downright positive stream compared to that. Now, not saying that his stream was bad because I had a blast in it, but I was like, man, um, with all the talk of dudes asking their own Ds, <laughs> I'm like... I, I certainly wouldn't want to be like, hey, mom, you got to check out this stream. My friend Astro, uh, <laughs> you got to check him out. I wouldn't show my mama that. <laughs> but at the same time, my mama also thought, uh, uh, Richard Pryor and Red Fox were hilarious. So if you know who those two people are, uh, then you already know what kind of woman my mama was. Oh, look at us. Hitting these ramps. We're hitting ramps like, like we actually know what we're doing.
Behold the son of our maker. We really need this arcade shot. No, we didn't get it. <laughs> I was watching another pinball stream earlier with Rick and Morty, and it was cursing up plenty. So I figured if the kids was watching, they could handle it. Exactly, right? Man, so replay is at 20 grand. Okay. So we got to play this until we get the replay, at least. I mean, 20 grand seems like, seems like it's achievable, right? I don't even think I need to make, uh, see a simulation to get 20 grand. Just a couple of multi-balls should get us there. Should. <laughs> so, I think even 10 beers in, working on number 11 and 12 uh, out of a dozen... I think 20 grand seems reasonable or 20 million, but by the way that I'm draining these balls, um, it might be harder than I think. Honestly, I have never found it this easy to drain my balls. Okay, that was a lame joke. Cammy, I apologize. Damn it. All right. Balls are saved. So let's try to get this 20. Might be harder than we think. What do you guys think? When you're watching this on the stream, does this look like the real table? No? Is it not close? I don't know. How good a job did VPW do with this table? Does it look as every bit as good as when, um, uh, oh, what's his name? It's not Flipstream. Damn it. I feel bad. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. He streams this table. He streams high speed and a bunch of EM machines like Chicago uh, and other machines. Damn it. I cannot think of what his name is. He's a super sweet guy. Oh, man. He's so good at responding to the chat. And I've forgotten his name. If you know who he is. And normally if I was not so many beers in, I would know exactly who it is. Um, but he usually streams EM Machines, Tron, and High Speed. Fantastic guy. I am letting him down with my absolutely horrid uh, Tron play. So I gotta step it up. I gotta step it up for him. So let's go. What are we? We're on ball three with two and a half million. So we're probably not gonna do it on this ball. But for future balls, we gotta make it happen for him. We gotta at least get the replay. All right, so we got the light cycle multi-ball. Tina Fey dressed as Princess Leia? That's hilarious and hot 
at the same time. Was it weird to say that? I know that you haven't left, Cammy, but welcome back. <laughs> Oh, and we drain out the side. Okay, so we got 10. So we're halfway to the replay. All right, we can do this. That means it is not impossible. Oh, maybe it is, but we get the ball saved. Wow, this um, this beer is stronger than I thought. Holy crap! Am I am I blaming my suck ass play on on alcohol? Blame it on the alco alco alcohol. Blame it on the alcohol. Is that a Jamie Foxx song? Blame it on the alcohol. Am I doing that? Do you guys do that? Do you do you blame it on the drink? Take a breath. All right, that, was, that wasn't the right shot. There's the gym shot. Oh no. Six and a half. That was a lot of work for six and a half. <laughs> you know, my pinball sounds exactly like that every time I start a game. We're gonna get that one back. Okay, cool. Ah, we lose it. Oh my god. That's horrible. That's horrible. 10.8. Okay, come on. We need we need 20. We need 20. What the what the fuck is going on? Alright. I'm using cuss words now. I'm I'm sorry if you got sensitive ears. It's four o'clock in the morning. I'm way too many beers in. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Wokeness has gone out the menu. It's gone out the window. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'm not even going to apologize. No. Oh, my God. So, 
there's a place that my wife loves going. One of her friends every month throws a, I wouldn't call it a party. I would call it like a, like a get together at this club called Groovies here in Oklahoma City, um, in, in Oklahoma. And they, it's a club that specializes in playing uh, music from the 80s through the early 2000s. Okay. So a lot of Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, uh, party music, all the way up through like NSYNC and uh, Britney Spears, Baby Hit Me One More Time kind of stuff. So it, it's one of those things where if, if, you're, if you're my age, you know, mid 40s, late 30s, you're probably going to know all the music. Anyway, um, so my wife is always like, hey, um, you know, Bobby's throwing a, throwing a get together at Groovy's. You should come. It's always on a Saturday night, once a month. So last night, or not last night, but this past Saturday, I decided, what the heck? I don't have anything else going on. And, you know, a couple of uh, tequila shots and some beers at a club with good music. Sounds like better than sitting at home watching YouTube videos, you know, on how to stream better, right? So I decided to go with her. I end up having the freaking time of my life. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm singing like word up and hit me baby one more time at the top of my lungs he needs and it's a freaking blast I love it right I'm, I'm having so much fun and whoever did that who is it dark Jesus what's up thank you very much for dropping the follow on me I appreciate that so I'm I'm having a literal blast and it's fun. It's amazing. I haven't had that much fun um, in a long time. And the fact that I can have that much fun with my wife um, in a long time. You know, cracking jokes and just laughing until our stomachs hurt and, and guzzling down rum and cokes. It was a blast. Absolutely fantastic. 3.8. What the fuck? What kind of shit? 3.8? Um, wow, I feel like I did a lot of work for that 3.8 and got nowhere. Um, but, but anyway, had a blast singing at the top of my lungs. And I was doing the whole rave thing with the glow sticks, you know, acting like you're a ninja in the dark with a glow stick, you know doing like karate moves with the glow stick. You know what I'm talking about. You've seen the videos, you know, where they're like, uh, 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 and twirling around with the glow stick and they're like, you know, that was me. That that was me. Ashamed to say, thankfully, no one caught it on video, so you'll never see that. So you'll just have to believe me that that, that was me. I was that guy with the glow stick, imagining that I was like a ultra ninja. Uh, Ultra Ninja. Uh, <laughs> like, don't come near me. I will murder you with my with my music and my glow sticks. But I was having a blast and it was fun. Hadn't done that in for so long. Part of the reason why I haven't done that for so long, uh, you know, risk of dying from COVID. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, just... I didn't want to do it. I didn't, I didn't feel like it. You know, it's like, I don't really have it in me to go to a pack club with a bunch of people and listen to old 80s and 90s music. Um, but I decided to go, and I had the time of my life. <laughs> oh, wow, you're a legend. <laughs> I, would, I would hardly say that I was a legend. Uh, but I'm glad that you think so. 
But I have to say, I had a freaking blast. Has anybody else done something where you're just like, I haven't done that in so long. I feel almost stupid doing it. But then you go do it, and then you're like, that was amazing. And you're like, why haven't I done this before? Or why haven't, why has I waited so long to actually do this? You know, you know what I mean? Like, you almost feel bad because you haven't done it. You know, like, you think you're back on all of the excuses that, that you used to do when you were like, oh, I can't do this. I got to study for school. I, I got work in the morning. I got this dumbass, not important shit to do. You know, all, all of these lame excuses. But then the one time when you're like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to go do it. I'm going to go do it. And then you do it. And then you're like, why didn't I go do this shit before? This was awesome. Like, I think if every person on the planet was like, I'm just, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to rock it. I'm going to go 100%, live my life, have a big ass smile on my face and screw what anybody else thinks. I'm just going to do the thing that makes me happy. Like, how many of y'all have done that recently? Kemi says, going outside, leaving the house, that one time I was like, why didn't I do this before? Yeah, exactly. It could be something super simple, right? And Kemi, tell me, what, what was the excuse that you had before? Don't, don't, don't be ashamed to, to shout it out, right? What was the excuse that you had before as to why you didn't do it? And now you look back on it and you're like, that was a dumbass excuse. I can't believe that kept me from doing the thing that that put a smile on my face. Right? I feel like a lot of people have so many, like, people have more, more excuses and reasons to not go do stuff than they do to, to actually just take that step and just go do it, go get it done, right? I, I see that every day. I sell eyeglasses for a living. I, I'm a professional optician. So, you know, when you go to the eye doctor, the person who's selling you glasses or teaching you how to wear a pair of glasses or, you know, adjusting them, helping you understand your, your prescription, that's me. That's what I do, right? And there was a lady who came in today and she had this like gorgeous pale yellow lemon color frame and it was like frosted uh, see-through yellow and her husband was like I don't like this frame and she wanted to return it and get something else and I was like the fuck I was like one your husband ain't wearing the glasses right and I said you had to have picked those for a reason right you just didn't pick them at random you picked them because you liked them and you thought they were cool now, of course, if somebody honestly doesn't like the glasses, I'm not going to force them to keep them. But I wanted her to understand, like, you pick these for a reason because they made you happy. Because they put a smile on your face. So, if they put a smile on your face and your husband doesn't like them and your husband doesn't wear the glasses, who are you really returning them for? And when you return the glasses and get something else, Who's really the person that you're making happy? Your husband or you? Right? So I told her, I said, the glasses that you wear are a personality statement. They can say something to you or they can say something about you before you ever open your mouth and talk. 
right? Somebody see you wearing the glasses and they can already like ascertain uh, an idea of who you are, of what you're about, just from looking at your glasses. So what does that say when you let someone else dictate how you should look, right? And like, I could see her eyes get big and wide as, as she understood what I was saying. And you know what? She decided to keep those glasses. Now, honestly, I wouldn't have cared either way if she wanted to trade them out for something else, you know, whatever is, you know, it's what the customer wants. But I just wanted her to understand, like, you picked these for a reason, you know, because they were a reflection of you. Don't worry about what anybody else is thinking. You do you. And she was so happy and she was so excited to wear those glasses. You know, and I was just like, yes, I felt good. She felt good. Like, it was it was perfect. It was perfect. You know, I don't know. If you've had something like that happen to you, it doesn't have to be with glasses. But like, you know, have you ever come across somebody who's just been like, they broke some shit down for you and it was just, and you thought about it and you were like, holy crap. I can't believe that I'm letting these other people who were not me dictate what's going on in my life. And I think we got, oh, we only got 12 million out of that one. I mean, we're creeping up, but we can do a whole lot better than that. We used to get to see a simulation. But of course, we used to get to see a simulation sober. <laughs> if we can actually do that uh, drunk, that would be amazing. Mm, ouch. Well, we're certainly not going to get there that way. Mm. Well, thank you, Cammy. You say you've met many of your friends and heroes online. What what makes them your your heroes, right? What 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 kind of traits, abilities, uh, personal beliefs do they have that you would look up to for them to be considered your heroes? Because to call somebody your personal hero, that's a that's a pretty significant thing, you know. That doesn't come lightly. You know, there there are a few people that I would model myself after. As far as streamers go. Um, I can think of one and that's not to hurt anybody's feelings it's just the one that my beer soaked brain is coming up with because it's a relatively recent exchange that I had with this particular streamer that streamer is, uh, is Rick from uh, I believe his name is Rick his real name is Rick uh from the living arcade, you know, with the kilt, the big beard, like the, the amount of stuff that he does for other people and his philosophy on life. If you've ever um, done something simple, like, um, like, I don't know, donated some bits, like, his his outlook on that he'll he'll tell you I I don't need this I didn't ask for it but I appreciate it and it's such a genuine feeling um it, it just he comes across as such a genuine guy I, I can't help but think man I wish I lived in Vegas so that I could be personal friends with this dude right Another dude that comes uh, that comes across um, a streamer. There is a guy, I believe, 
I I've only seen his streams and like YouTube video compilations or recaps, but he is a Pacific Islander of some sort. Um, maybe in Hawaii, Guam, um, New Zealand, so, something like that. Um, but I, he's a woodworker. Maybe he builds um, surfboards or something. But he just has the biggest smile, sweetest face, and he'll just tell you like, oh, I, I appreciate you falling following or subscribing or donating some bits or donating some money but I don't need it he's like you know what I'll, I'll refund it back to you you know like I, I, I god I wish I knew the dude's name if you know who he is please shout it out in, in chat if you know who I'm talking about um, but just oh my god like you want to talk about people that <laughs> that you're like Man, if I could be like anybody, it'd be like this dude or this lady. That dude, like, he's reached a level of gratitude that that I can, I can only imagine uh, uh, that that I could reach. It's amazing. Oof. Oh, no, that is not the way to get there. <laughs> Cammy says Pacific Islanders have the best attitudes. <laughs> My heroes are the engineers who invented Amiga computer, especially RJ Michael and Dave Needle, who also invented Atari Linux and 3DO. Man, I didn't have an Atari Linux, but I had an Atari Lynx, which I believe was the, the portable model. Oh, damn, we're out of coins. We did not make our uh, our, our 20 uh, million, which is unfortunate. That's horrible. That is a very sad day. When I met Dave Needle, he picked me up like a strong man, despite being kind of a small guy. And RJ took me on a personal tour of the Google headquarters, where we borrowed, <laughs> borrowed <laughs> some Google bikes and got chased by security guards. That sounds like a fun day. Good stories. There are a bunch of them who stay in our village for a few months every year. They come here as fruit pickers. And they're always listening to happy music, playing volleyball in the tennis courts. I watched them play from my window. Yeah, the portable Atari Linux. That's what they invented. Yeah. So I had one of those. I wanted a 3DO and I wanted a uh, Atari Jaguar. But I can't remember exactly how I obtained the Linux. I didn't buy it for myself. My parents didn't buy it for me. I think it was one of those things that I got from a friend um, when I was mowing lawns for extra money as a, as a kid. I think I was maybe like 12 or 13, um, and I bought it off a friend. I think that's how I acquired it. God, I'm, I'm gonna try to find out that that dude's name, but he just, oh man, he's. Every time I, I see like a YouTube video about him, he's just nothing but the sweetest guy, and is always telling people, like, you know, you don't have to donate, you know, I don't need your money, I'm just here because it's fun, because I want to share what I do with, with other people. And I'm just like, man, wow, what, what an absolutely fantastic attitude to have.
I knew that was going down the drain. We tried. Cammy says, I got my first Linux from a friend. He only had the game that came with it and got bored with it and gave it to me. I bought a bunch more games for it and loved it. Yeah, the, the Atari Lynx was freaking amazing. It, it was amazing. And I remember when I was like, uh, I think I was either 14 or 15. I had a um, an engage, <coughs> and I think it was actually spelled the letter N, then gauge, G A G E. It was made by a cell phone company, uh, maybe Nokia or Motorola, and it was okay. And it had the worst version ever of Street Fighter on it. I mean, it was. It was just straight up some booze. <laughs> but I freaking loved that thing. But it was never as good as the Lynx that I had before it. Nokia, yes, the Nokia Engage. Cammy, you are right on point with the video game technology. You're gonna be my go-to source for that. I really like the the, uh, the color ROM on this. I'll take it. Never had one, but there was a Tomb Game, Tomb Raider game on it that you remember. Was it one made that was specifically for the engage, or was it like a, a, a port? Oh, snuck by me holding that flipper in. That's what happens. Replay at 28. That's gonna be hard to get to on this table. We're gonna need some uh, some different kinds of madnesses, uh, stacked madnesses uh, to get there. Ah, that is not how we get there. Ouch. One game left. Let's go. Shot. We're starting off good. And not so good. <laughs> I think it was a port. Man, there were all so many old school video game systems that I wish I had. Um... Freaking uh, TurboGrafx-16 uh, was number one on my list. No, I take that lie back. TurboGrafx-16 was only number one on my list because there was no way in hell my parents were affording a Neo Geo. 
but I wanted a Neo Geo so bad, so bad. Just to be able to play like Metal Slug and Samurai Showdown um, in my own house. And it was so cool because the cartridges were basically just the freaking ROM from the actual arcade machine. Like, it was like nobody in my friends group, nobody on my block, on the military base where I lived at as a kid. Um, Morton Road, Aniston, Alabama. Um, just off of Baker Gate, uh, Fort McClellan. Fort McClellan, Aniston, Alabama. Baker Gate. Uh, and Morton Road was uh, was the next block after you came in through the bait through through the gate uh, on base. Like nobody in my circle of friends or on base was anywhere close. It wasn't even a dream to get a uh, to get a Neo Geo. It was so expensive, so exclusive. Uh, man, I wanted one so bad. And my brother finally has one. It took him, uh, how old is he? I'm 44, about to be 45. He's three and a half years younger. So I think he got it a couple of years ago. So he was about 40 when he was finally able to, uh, to get one and afford one. <laughs> but man, I remember that. And those cartridges were so freaking big. You know, they, they, they were the size of freaking books, like, like textbooks. They were huge. And then that freaking four button arcade controller. Oh, man. <laughs> that, that was the dream back in the day. To, to be able to have a Neo Geo in your house. Because if you had a Neo Geo in your house, like, you you had an arcade, you had an arcade machine. I mean, you, you just did. If you had a Neo Geo in your house, you straight up had an arcade machine. There, there's, there's no getting around it. Uh-oh, what did I do? Did I break it? Hell no, no one could afford a Neo Geo. I'm so happy to have an MVXS at three scale. We didn't get the TurboGrafx-16 in Australia. It was only an NTSC system. We have PAL. Really? So no, no converters or anything like that? You could probably get it now if you wanted, right? The, the game, there were two games that I wanted the most on the TurboGrafx-16, and that was Bonk's Adventures and Slaughterhouse. Those, I remember, um, okay, so I'm gonna date myself here. I already said that I was 44, going on 45, but I'm gonna date myself here. Okay, when I was a kid, it was a common thing to, like, the Sears catalog would come in the mail like mm, around September, end of August, September, the Sears catalog would show up. And we used to take the Sears catalog and we would dog ear the pages. So fold the corners of the pages. Um, if there was a toy or a bicycle or whatever it was, we would dog ear the pages. Um, and then we would circle with a black magic marker, what we wanted on the page. And it would be like, it would be like a letter. It'd be like a letter and a number. So it'd be like, you know, you'd look at all the pictures and the picture would have like a J to it, like a, like a letter J. And then you would look on the bottom of the page and it'd be like a letter J with the description of what it was and the price. 
So we would circle the picture and they would circle the letter J with the description. So that way mom and dad knew exactly, exactly what it was that they were not going to buy us <laughs> because our grades were too low or we were bad kids or whatever it was. But anyway, we had hope. We had faith. <laughs> so, and the Neo Geo was one of them. And of course, I think it was like five hundred, four or five hundred dollars in like nineteen ninety or nineteen eighty nine, something nineteen ninety, something like that. It was like five hundred. Can you imagine how much money four or five hundred dollars was in like nineteen ninety? Can you imagine? <laughs> Four or five hundred dollars for a video game system was a lot. It is a lot now. Like trying to buy a PlayStation 5, you know, for like five, six hundred bucks. That's a lot of money now. Can you imagine that in 1990s kind of money? You know, like, can you imagine the kind of grades that I would have to have for my single military parent dad? To be like, yeah, I'll buy that for my son, whose grade average is a D plus. I'll totally, I'll totally get that for my son because he deserves it. <laughs> Hell no. My dad was thinking, that's three car payments on my Mustang. And he didn't even have a good Mustang. He had a Mustang SVO which he used to brag about. Oh, they only made 88 of these, son. I know why they made only 88 of them. It was a four-cylinder turbocharged Mustang. It was a Mustang SVO. It had like a top speed of like, I don't know, back to the future kind of speed, like 88 miles an hour. Like it wasn't fast at all, but he was so proud of it. You know, it's like, I got a Mustang, and it's a special edition. It's a special edition because it's special ed. <laughs> it's slow as hell. Now, his best friend, Mr. Baldwin, had a Mustang 5.0. You know, like that same one that uh, uh, Vanilla Ice used to have. It would embarrass my dad because it was so fast. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, they would get together on like Saturdays and like put their cars in the driveway and like spend all day on a Saturday. These two military drill sergeant dudes spend all day on a Saturday washing and waxing their Mustangs. And the only reason why I ever like to go to Mr. Baldwin's house was because Mr. Baldwin was a big kid at heart. I mean, when I say big kid, this grown ass man had like a train set, like a like a model train set that filled up half of his garage, right? It was so big. He had, oh my God. When it came to video games, he had the, uh, the, the little Nintendo robot I forget what it's called. Um, that they used to like take the little stack of things and like move them over here. I forget. I think it was called Robbie the Robot or something like that. He had that. He had the NES Advantage controller that looked like an arcade stick with like turbo buttons. He had the Power Glove. He just he had remote control cars. Like going over Mr. Baldwin's house was like was literally like going over to Toys R Us and being able to play with the coolest toys that they had in the store. Like, we love going over Mr. Baldwin's house. <laughs> it, it was awesome. I, I hope, Mr. Baldwin, wherever you are out there, I, I hope that you're doing well and I hope that you're still playing with toys. <laughs> Because because of you, I still I still play with toys 
as a grown ass man. And I, I, I think it's absolutely a wonderful thing to do, a wonderful thing to share with people, uh, especially the younger generation, especially kids, to let them know that just because you're a grown up doesn't mean that you can't have toys. And Mr. Ballman had the coolest toys. He didn't have a Neo Geo though. That was even too expensive for him. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin says I used to hang around with lots of car guys when I was younger <laughs> went up to the big car park on the Gold Coast where everyone oh I thought we got replay but with only a million nope <laughs> I used to go to the Gold Coast where everyone would show off their cars even though I only had a cheap shit box hey you know what if it got you from point A to point B, that's the best kind of vehicle. I hope Mr. Baldwin <laughs> is living it up still too, though. Sounds like a cool guy. He was the coolest guy. I remember um, when like satellite dishes were a thing, and this is way before direct TV or anything. When we're talking satellite dishes, we're talking about a thing that was like... Uh, I don't, let me, I don't even know if I can explain it. He had to have a, a concrete pad poured for the telescope. Uh, not, not for the telescope, for the satellite dish. And then this thing was probably 10 feet across. And it had like a motorized base so that you could aim it to a certain point in the sky using a, a, a remote control that was in the house. I mean, it, it was it was ridiculous. It was so big. It was ridiculously big. Way before DirecTV or, or Dish Network or anything like that. I mean, it was it was a satellite dish. It, it, it was, like, made out of, like, mesh so you could, like, see through it. It, it. it was weird, and it was huge, and it was big. And when it moved, it made, like, this, like, crunchy gear sound. I mean, it, it was just ridiculous. And he'd be like, look, I can get ESPN. I can get, uh, you know, like BET in Russian. Like he was like, I can watch this channel on the East Coast or on the West Coast, or I can watch this channel in German. It was ridiculous. And we were just like, how can this man on a military salary, he was a drill sergeant, the same as my dad, afford all of these ridiculous toys. He bought my dad as a Christmas present because my, my parents had gotten divorced. And my dad had quite a few credit card bills to, to catch up on. So we didn't have a whole lot of money. And he bought my dad a microwave in like 1988. Do you know how expensive a microwave was in 1988? And this thing was huge. It was like, it was the same size as like an oven, like our stove. It was huge. You know, <laughs> that was when people were still worried that like having a microwave would like give you brain cancer, <laughs> which those old school microwaves probably did. That's probably why I act like I do now. But anyway, this microwave was $800 and he gave it to my pops. As a Christmas present. And they were both the same rank in the military. <laughs> and so they made the same money. <laughs> but he gave it to us. He was like, hey, here's a Christmas present for you. I mean, Mr. Baldwin was the absolute coolest man. Yeah, was, oh my God. He had a son and a daughter. The daughter's name was Hava. Hava. Pronounced with the H. But it was spelled with the A. T-H. So it was T-H-A-V-A. -A. Um, but she was called Hava. And then I believe his son was Marcus. Um, I would love to, to meet her, see them again. Um, 
just just to be like, you know what? You have inspired me to be a grown ass man with a bunch of toys. <laughs> oh man. It's because of Mr. Baldwin, like my childhood was awesome. Because normally it would just be like, who wants to go hang out on a Saturday with their dad to watch two old dudes obsess over their Mustangs and wash and wax them, right? But if it wasn't for Mr. Baldwin's toys, like I, I would have never gone. Man, <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry that I'm going on and on about Mr. Baldwin, but he was he was freaking awesome. He was he was freaking awesome. I, I would give anything to to like find him on Facebook or just have a phone call with him. Like he he really meant that much to me. He he was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Must be so lucky getting satellite TV. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did have kids. He had a he had a son and a daughter. Yeah, it it, it would be cool. Uh, I I really wish that my dad was very good about keeping uh, notes and keeping an up to date. Um, I, I don't know what you call it. Um, I don't want to say friends list, like a like a Rolodex. I don't know. Y'all might be too young to remember what a Rolodex is. But anyway, it, he was he was very good about keeping up with people's addresses and phone numbers. Um, and unfortunately, he passed away um, in 2020 due to uh, uh, cancer and not being able to get the help that he needed in a timely manner because the hospitals were filled with COVID patients. But anyway, uh, I, I really should have asked my dad, hey, where are Mr. Baldwin? Have you kept up with him? Um, another uh, uh, soldier uh, that, that worked with my dad um, that was close to my dad was this dude, um, Mr. Manor. Mr. Manor was awesome. I, I can't remember his son's name, but we were really close. And Mr. Manor uh, looked after us um, when my dad would go on TDY, um, which was kind of like... Um, uh, like a, like a mandatory, like, he'd have to go on TDY to, like, Afghanistan for, like, 30 days. And then me and my brother TJ um, would have to be at home by ourselves, basically, for, for the whole time. So we would either stay with Mr. Manor or we would... Um, uh, uh, we would stay at home and basically be latchkey kids. And then Mr. Manor would just make sure that, you know, we didn't burn the house down or, you know, we had food to eat, stuff like that. So Mr. Manor was kind of like our guardian, but my dad uh, had to go, uh, you know, off to a war zone or some other place to train soldiers or whatever, whatever he was doing. <laughs> so Mr. Manor was kind of like our, our guardian. And uh, this is like our like our second family. Um, so he was awesome when we were in Germany and Seoul, Korea and all kinds of places. It seemed like Mr. Manor was always there uh, to look after us. Now, Mr. Manor didn't have a lot of toys, but Mr. Manor was... Uh, he, he was a family guy through and through and coming from like a broken home you know that the you know going through you know a divorce of my parents and stuff and seeing Mr. Manor and his wife like we were just like oh there are some families that you know 
that just work. Not every family works. But he was really good at making us feel like we were a part of his family. Joust, catapult, multi-ball madness. So double multi-ball madness. So let's try to make it work. We've also got trolls going on. Oh no, we drained them all. Troll multi-ball madness. All right, let's go. So we still got some multi-ball madness going on. Oh no, we drained everything. We did destroy the castle though, so that's good. <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? I, I really should look them up. It's amazing what you can think of uh, when you're, you know, 10, 11 beers in. <laughs> yeah, I, I do have some, some great childhood memories. They're, they're freaking awesome. There we go, drawbridge down. Oh no, please tell me that wasn't ball three. I haven't been paying attention. We're at 19, oh no, almost to 20. Uh oh, what a heartbreak. What a freaking heartbreak. Man, oh man. Yeah, be, you know, th thanks to my pop and the uh, and the military community, um, a lot of people throw around, you know, it takes a village. But when you grow up on a military base, that, that statement is never more true. I remember getting freaking whoopings from, <laughs> from literal people that I didn't know. But they knew my dad. They were like, hey, your dad is out of the country right now. So I'm going to beat your ass because I heard about what you did in school. You know? <laughs> and then I'm, I'm going to tell your dad uh, that I beat your ass. You know? And then my dad would call me and be like, I heard Mr. Johnson got a piece of you. Uh, sounds like he did the right thing. <laughs> it's like... It's like, what? That would never go over nowadays, you know. But it literally took a village, you know, back in the day, you know, to, to make sure everything was cool. You know, you, you saw a kid acting a fool. You just handled that right then and there, you know. Oh, straight down the middle drain, unfortunate. Cammy says, I wish my family had made more friends outside of extended family members. I wish my nephews could come and visit me. I think maybe myself and my partner could be the cool ones <laughs> who the kids have memories of. Living in this cute little wooden college with an arcade inside of it, pool, tennis court, Golf course outside? Heck yeah! That sounds like an awesome place. Man. For the kids who come and visit you, yeah. They're gonna be amazing memories. Absolutely. Yes. You should do every everything in your power to uh, catapult, troll, multi-ball madness. Let's go. Oh no, we are draining everything. Oh no, that is very bad. 
That is very, very bad. Oh, that was a horrible multi ball. Yeah, definitely. Make sure you do everything in your power to share that. Oh, no. And it's ball three and we're done. Man. Fingers crossed they'll all be here next January. Awesome. Well, I'm crossing my fingers for you. Absolutely. I think in, in some parts of the world, we're, we're starting to return to somewhat normal. You know, and, and I'm happy to see that. Oh, what a savage drain. <laughs> yeah, a, a lot of people think that, you know, growing up in a military family is like a horrible thing. But there's like a million and one stories I could tell. You know, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that people would think is not so great, you know, um, especially if you have to travel outside of the United States, you know, back in the day, we called the United States the world. Oh man, I can't wait to get back to the world, right? When you were in a foreign country, you felt like you felt like you were outside of the world. But my dad was very good at teaching us that the world is a super small place. Damn it. Um, honestly, Australia felt better than most countries with regard to COVID, and Tasmania didn't even have any until they opened the borders in December. Wow. Really? So y'all went darn near two years before you really had an issue with COVID. That's, that's pretty amazing. Um, but my dad was very good at making sure that... Um, like we weren't picky eaters so it kind of smarted kind of started with small stuff um, just making sure we weren't picky eaters um, making sure that we were super thankful for whatever food that we got because when we finally did go to foreign countries one, we weren't picky eaters, so we ate a lot of stuff that, heck, even now I probably wouldn't want to eat. Um, only because I, I have a choice not to eat it. Um, but it just, I don't know. I, I think the, the main thing that he taught us was that no matter where you are in the world, most people want the same thing. They might have a different way of expressing it, but they want the same thing. You know, everybody wants to, you know, have peace and happiness within their family and community, um, regardless of their political or social or religious beliefs. Um, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, everybody loves food. <laughs> like, try to find me somebody on the planet who's who's not down to eat something delicious. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> he needs some Who milk. is that? Uh, I'm probably going to slaughter that trying to say it. Uh, uh, but I'll, I'll give it a try. Let me see what it says. Um, Aguilar. I, I probably slaughtered that, but I believe that's how that is. I will all. Um, but I appreciate you dropping the follow on me. But I mean, we, we went to so many different places and ate so much absolutely disgusting food. 
<laughs> you know, you, you think of the big ones and you're like, oh man, I went to France. What'd you eat in France? I ate some snails. The snails are freaking delicious. Um, especially when prepared in a wine reduction <laughs> uh, and cooked to a medium rare so they're not uh, too tough. Absolutely delicious. Kind of like um, earthy scallops. Yeah, kind of like earthy scallops. Delicious. Um, but, but if you tell somebody nowadays, like, oh, with some snails, unless they're traveled and ed educated, they're going to be like, nope, ain't doing that. You know, by that time we were in the Middle East and a family cooked some goat head for us. I mean, as a young child, that's the first time I'd ever gotten any head. So I was like, um, this is weird, but okay. And it, it was cooked in, in a uh, kind of a, a dairy milk kind of broth. And it was super tender. Oh man, it was delicious. Only thing I couldn't handle, they was like, um, who wants the eyeball? And I was like, you know, as an 11 year old, I was like, not me. <laughs> no, I don't want the eyeball. But my dad had a, had a specific rule. Um, don't say no. Uh, don't ever say no. Always say yes. So that's how I was able to try things like the loop. Catapult. Multi-ball madness. Let's go. If you never had balloon. It's a, a 20, 27 day old chicken egg. And when I say chicken old chicken egg. I mean a fertilized chicken egg. So uh, a live chicken baby that hasn't hatched yet. Not uh, particularly delicious, um, but it was tender, except for the beak. The, the beat uh, took a little uh, took a little work there we go that's what I'm talking about Combos, we hitting them. Let's go. Woo! Ah, that didn't work out. Cammy says, "Once Omicron was the dominant strain, we let people in. <laughs> well, at least it was the the weakest strain so far." Kevin okay, says, no matter where you live or how you express it, everyone wants a Neo Geo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you never ate a snail, even when you visited France. Oh, oh, you're missing out. You're missing out, homegirl. Now, the choice between a beautifully cooked filet mignon and a snail, would I prefer one of the over? I'm taking the filet every time okay make no mistake <laughs> make, make no mistake but do not deny yourself the opportunity even if you don't like it even if you're like yo i took a bite into the snail and i almost raft uh, take a bite of the snail you will never forgive yourself 
if you if you don't do it. I mean, does that does that make sense? Multi-ball madness. Let's go. Charge. Horrible multi ball. Ah. <coughs> uh, I didn't realize I was playing a two player game. But that's what happened when you're 11 beers in working on the 12th one. I don't know. For y'all who uh, stream and drink, is 11 beers a lot? Is 12 beers a lot? Is that normal for you? Or are you like, damn. That boy got a stomach. Like, is that a is that a thing? Are you proud of me, Dad? Are you proud of me? Just let me know, Dad. I just want to be. I just want to be proud. Mm. Well. That is all of my beers. I am out of beers. We're on ball three. 11 and a half million. Look at that. Live catching like a boss. Like a boss. So, Cammy, in Tasmania, if I were to visit there, what would be the thing that I would eat that I probably couldn't get anywhere else in the world? that I might be a little bit hesitant about, but is normal to you guys. Do you have anything like that? That's normal to you guys, but I might go, uh... damn it, that was horrible. Ball save, thank you. Come home. This finished a ball wide. I had half a bottle before I opened this one. Woo! So you're one and a half in. Welcome to the club.
You are my kind of person already. <laughs> well, congratulations. Oh, no. Ball three and we're done. Ouch. Only 14. Uh, we didn't quite get there. I think we're done with this table, guys. What else do we got? I don't think we've played a classic yet. What kind of classic? Well, let's go for a classic. Now, Grand Prix is my default classic. And I know, I know that when I play a classic, people abandon the stream. They're like, fuck this. We want to see the modern cool shit. But there are some games that are classics that are truly good. They, they really are. So let me see what I got here. So I got Meteor. I got Nine Ball. Rancho, eh, I wouldn't put that at the top. But I got Stars. And Stars was recently in a Fox Cities tournament, uh, I believe over the weekend. So maybe we should go for Stars. Let's give it a try. Uh, there's no unique food here unless you wanted to eat a Tasmanian Devil which are extremely endangered, protected, and currently dying out from a contagious form of cancer. Uh, yeah, I probably wouldn't want to, not because I'd be like, ew, Tasmanian devil, but I would feel bad that I was eating something that, that was so protected and so endangered. You know what I mean? But really, there's no like unusual food where you'd just be like, nah, I can't eat that. Like, there's no food there that you think a foreigner to Tasmania would be like, nah, I'm not eating that. Ooh, we didn't get no... I have any stars yet? Oh no! We go truffles, saffron, hazelnuts, walnuts, and Pinot Noir. Man, that sounds like a wonderful place to live. <laughs> you have nothing but nothing but absolutely delicious uh, foods there. So there is nothing. That like, if I if I came over to visit you, there's nothing that you would feel hesitant about offering me to eat. And be like, I don't know if this American guy would actually eat this. Ooh, wow, what a bad plunge! House ball, Don Don Pan Pan. Hello, oh my God, I haven't seen you in forever. But of course. I haven't streamed this late. You're still in Japan, bro. I had a feeling that if I was streaming this late, um, <laughs> I was eventually going to get uh, my Japan peeps uh, showing up. Still in Japan, snow is melting. So in Japan, seasons are opposite. So Christmas time is actually what we would call summer, I believe. But I only know that because my brother spent two and a half years living in Nagoya. And I was telling somebody at work, I was like, um, it was really unusual for him because he's a very large black dude. And when I say large, he's a little bit taller than me, like by an inch and a half. But he's also a very, <laughs> he's a fat guy. <laughs> so 
living in the town of Nagoya, which I believe is the sumo wrestling capital of Japan. Uh, he was treated, he got special accommodations everywhere he went, even though he wasn't a sumo wrestler. People just assumed that he was a sumo wrestler. So he would go to places and get like uh, double portions. Um, he would get extra special service um, because they made the assumption that he was he was a sumo wrestler. Don Don says that's kind of cool. So Cammy says Tasmania has a horrible dark history. White colonizers wiped out native population, cut down the world's southernmost rainforest, and started farming sheep and cattle. Those must be some delicious, delicious uh, racks of lamb and filet mignon. See, Cammy. You have to look on the bright side, okay? You have to look on the bright side. The world is full of dark places and horrible things that have happened, but without slashing and burning waiting for us, you would not have access to delicious racks of lamb and filet mignon. So, you know, look at the bright side. Now, please be aware that I am being slightly cynical and sarcastic, okay? That is absolutely horrible. But I do love filet mignons and racks of lamb. Now, would I sacrifice entire ecosystems to obtain them? Probably not. We got 9,000 bonus, and it's not going to be enough to save us. <laughs> she says, I know. <laughs> so we got 7,000. I'm so jealous of Don't Panic Flip. Because he actually owns this game. He has a real deal version of stars. What a bad drain. What? Paladin Arcade? Holy crap. Have I been streaming for so long that you went to bed and then got up for work and I'm still streaming? Is that what happened? Because if it is, that's kind of fucking cool. <laughs> when is the last time you have seen a try to tilt pinball stream go on this long. I say good night to you, and now I'm saying good morning. <laughs> 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 
Well, you just missed it. Uh, I finished my 12th bottle of beer. Uh, and let's see. We were about four and a half hours before the stream crash. And it says we are one hour and 56 minutes now. So that would put us at six and a half hours of streaming. Paladin, I think you are uh, a... <laughs> I think you need to step up your game, bro. If you're not doing at least five hours, um, I mean, what are you doing with your life, man? I mean, I know you got kids and a wife and family and all that stuff, but, you know, fuck all that, dude. You gotta, you gotta stream, man. Yeah, no doubt. Jurassic Park home pin. I mean, Kimmy, had you played Jurassic Park um, before, like the pro model premium version? Had you played that in the, you know, in the arcade or, or somewhere before? And quite honestly, what do you think of the home pin? Jack Danger did an amazing job on Jurassic Park. He absolutely did. I think the Jurassic Park home pin is <laughs> way better than what they did with the Star Wars home pin. The Star Wars home pin just, by comparison, seems like a half-ass effort. You can tell that they were really like, with the, with the Star Wars home pin, you can tell that they were really like, Let's just make something cheap for the people who can't afford a real pinball machine. But Jack Danger, when he did Jurassic Park, he was like, I am gonna squeeze everything I possibly can into this machine to give people the maximum, uh, 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 uh. like he, he was just gonna go as much as he can. He was like, okay, give me a budget, give me a budget. And they were like, okay, you have this much. Like, we can we can sell the machine for this much, and you can only spend this much to build it. And Jack Danger was like, took it all the way to the limit, and was like, I need $5 more. <laughs> and he got it. Like, he just stuffed it with everything he possibly could. And because of that, I, I look forward to more... Jack Danger pins, whether they be home pins or or full out LEs and premiums, with that mindset and attitude of just like you know what, just because it's a base model or just because it's not part of the premium lineup or whatever, doesn't mean that I can't give it 100%. You know what I mean? I can't give it 110%. And because of that attitude, I'm just like, oh my God, when he gets a full budget for, you know, for a premium or LE model, like, what is he going to do with that? Oh my God. <laughs> I never got to play Keith Elvin's uh, Jurassic Park. Okay. Okay. Uh, I have played John Borg's two JP pins heaps of times in arcades. When I was younger, though, okay. JP in the Lost World, okay. I think most people would have no idea it's not a fully commercial cornerstone machine. It's very feature-packed. Yeah, when I was watching Jack Danger's streams, like, honestly, the only thing that I really ever noticed was, like, the slightly smaller DMD screen. Um, and, and it had less... Um, animations and things like that on it but as far as the actual shots on the play field i think unless you're a pinball aficionado 
Like you wouldn't freaking notice. You would notice that the shots on the home edition are every bit as challenging, every bit as satisfying when you make them. Like there's there's very little that's lost as far as the entertainment value on the home pin versus a pro. There there's he did he did a fantastic job on that. So if somebody were like, oh yeah, I could do a pro, you know, for, for 10 grand, or I could do an LE for 12, or I can do the home pin for 7,000, 7,500. If it really came down to the, the, the pro versus a home pin, I'd be like, you know what? I think you're going to have ass loads of fun with the home pin. Now, if it was a home pin versus, you know, versus the LE, like, that's a no contest. But a home pin versus a pro, especially as maybe somebody's, you know, dipping their toe into the world of, of physical pinball machines. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think you're going to get so much entertainment value out of that. And it works perfectly as a gateway drug. And Cammy, I hope you don't find any of my remarks as disparaging. Because I have not played the home pin and I've spent very little time. Oh, Lazarus, let's do it. I have spent very little time playing the pro version of Jurassic Park that I have uh, access to at Cactus Jacks. But just from my own experience of playing various pinball machines, whether they be premiums, LEs, um, and what I've watched in various streams, uh, to have one in my house, I would not be disappointed at all to have a home version, especially Jurassic Park. Maybe a little bit the Star Wars version, because we have a Star Wars LE uh, at Cactus Jacks. So to, to know that the Star Wars version, that the home version has been neutered so much um, versus a premium or LE, that would bother me. But the Jurassic Park, absolutely not. And I can't, I can't wait to see what he does with a full budget, where he's just allowed to go ham. Cammy okay, says the only thing I feel like I'm missing are the loopy wire forms. Yeah, and, and the wire forms cost money. So when you put the wire forms in there, you know, you're, you're talking about, you know, adding another, uh, let, let's be honest, you know, a thousand bucks, you know. There we go. Ah, oh, double spinners. I'll take it. Let's go. Oh, you got me on that one. Yeah, if you were to, if, if you were new to pinball and you went to, like, like here in Oklahoma City, if you're going to buy a pinball machine, um, you're probably going to go to a place like either Galaxy or uh, Amini's Galleria, Amini's uh, Galleria, um, to buy... Um, an arcade machine, you know, pinball machine, a ski ball, whatever. You're going to go to one of these family entertainment, home theater kind of places. And if you saw a Jurassic Park home edition next to a pro and you didn't know what you were looking at and you just saw the price of like $5,500 versus a pro at like seven thousand dollars so fifteen hundred dollar difference and you're just looking at those two 
most people would take the home edition if they didn't know what they were looking at. Because they would look at the shots, maybe they would play it, and they'd be like, it's... Like, I, I can't see $1,500 worth of difference. Both of them are super entertaining. And I am wobbling back and forth like this because I really have to pee. So, I am going to take another bio break, and then I will be right back. I'm also going to rinse out my glass because I think we need to switch to... Um, to seltzers so i'm gonna go do that real quick i'll be back in two minutes so let's switch it up i'm gonna give you that and mm, that's unfortunate that my webcam is missing but i will be right back in two minutes thank you so much for waiting
<laughs> Whoa, we are back. <laughs> I say we. Like there's, like there's more than one of me. <laughs> it's just me. Man. Ah, there we go. Woo wee. Whew. What do we got? We got uh, Sonic, which is a local restaurant. Um, it's a, um, oh, what do you call it? Drive-in restaurant. It's a restaurant with car hops, if you know what those are. So car hops are like people who come out, bring your food on roller skates. Think of it as like um, a drive-in movie theater, but without the movies and food instead. But that's what it is. So that's who the company, the, the company Sonic is. So, um, so it is a Sonic uh, hard seltzer. And this is classic lemonade. So this should uh, pucker my butthole up quite good. <laughs> what did I do with my glass? Ah, I guess I left it in the kitchen. Straight out the can it is. I had a Sonic in Vegas a few years ago. Wow, so you came to Vegas. Nice, all right. What did you think of Vegas? Was it everything that you thought it was gonna be? And why were you in Vegas? Were you a uh, business trip? Just for pleasure? Just being a tourist? What's up? Oh yeah, that's, that's definitely lemonade. Oh, wow. <laughs> Had to see roller skaters. Good for three days. Oh, what a hard drain. That's called a house ball. I drove from Grand Junction down to Vegas. Did some Route 66. Route 66 is my favorite. I love it. I always like to head west on Route 66. Uh, I ride a motorcycle for, um, for pretty much everything. Uh, unless it's uh, ridiculously cold or icy or there's like monsoon-like weather. I can handle cold. I can handle heat. I can even handle a little bit of rain. But if any one of those things gets to the point where I would consider it extreme, uh, then I won't ride. Um, but riding a motorcycle is my main source of transportation. And so Route 66 is vitally important to me, both for entertainment and just getting where I'm going. So heading west on Route 66 uh, I love to do it. Oh, damn. We're out of, we're out of quarters on this piece? That's a travesty. We got to reload. Let's go. Reload. Yeah, Paladin Arcade, you're exactly right, house ball. So, are you up and about, Paladin? Are you uh, are you basically uh, getting ready for work now? Because it is, what time is it? So it's just before six here. So if you're on the East Coast, it is just before seven there. So I, I have to imagine that you are either at work already or getting ready for work. Wow, I am just sucking ass at this table. So you you literally caught my stream and then went to bed and then woke up and I'm still streaming. <laughs> Oh, 
Ouch. Ooh, this table is not being nice to me. But I want Don't Panic. Flip play this. And uh, he, he beats at this table. I'm, I'm over here on a struggle bus uh, trying to make mac and cheese out of ramen noodles and a slice of government cheese. All right, we, 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 we can do better than that. We can do better than that. All right, let's let's actually put some put some effort into it. Oh. Paladin says house ball. Yeah, you're right. They're all house balls. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. This game is cheating. It's cheating. Welcome back, Cammy. <laughs> I know you didn't actually leave. <laughs> Batted it down. Why did I do that? Only 46, 420. Uh, we can do better than 46, 420. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. We, we can do that. We can do that. Let's go. There we go. Solid spinner rip. Oh no! Another solid spinner rip. Oh! <laughs> this table is ripping me a new one. Wow. Don Don says I gotta go. Good seeing you, man. Take care. Hey, thank you so much for dropping in. I appreciate it. It's always nice seeing my friends. God dang it. Well, we got to 51. That's better than 46. All right. We're moving up. Ah, I thought I could bounce it off the center post.
Da! All right, we're in 62, so we're doing good. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it. Damn it! Ah, so we got 73. So we're working our way up. Palin Arcade, gotta get to. Bye, everyone. Hey, that's all right, man. I know you gotta go put that work in, so thank you very much for dropping by. Have a good morning, Paladin. was absolutely reprehensible behavior. Do a couple more of this one. Oh, come on. Killing me, bro. You're killing me. All right, ball three. We're at 42. 50 now. Oh, come on. <sighs> not enough bonus. It's not going to get us there. Well, we're at 71. Okay. That, that got us there. Okay. But what I want is 100 grand. This one's gonna be the death of me. Is it gonna be my rage inducing table of the night? No. Not not stars. Whoever whoever rage quits on stars. Who who does that? Guys, ever seen anybody rage quit on stars? Just don't panic flip rage quit on stars. Four. Ah, okay.
Oh, come on. Really? Really? Come on. <laughs> Ouch. This is starting to hurt. Oh my god. Okay. We can't do that. We're out of we're at our quarters. We're we're out of quarters on that one. I hope you all are having a great night, a good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. My name is Chris. I'm Try to Tilt. Or my name is Chris. This is Try to Tilt. I've had uh, 12 beers, and I'm working on seltzers now. <laughs> and I've been streaming for... Uh, God damn, what the... Uh, Six o'clock. So seven hours. <laughs> and I've been having fun for every one of those seven hours. Thanks to you guys. So. Seven hours you're a machine. Yes. I know Kung Fu. <laughs> it is uh, extremely rare that I actually stream for this long. Most of the time, it's uh, a couple of hours, three at most. But that means that you guys are a lot of fun. And... I appreciate that. Yep, we'll take shame. Let's do it. As far as I know, there's not a way to restart Shane. What? So, 
as I know it, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy is about 95% uh, accurate as far as the, uh, the, the custom scripting of the ROM. And Batman 66 is about 98 to 99% uh, accurate as far as the custom scripting of the ROM. So I cannot wait to see the next game that the Fishbowl and Mr. H are working on. Um, and I would expect that to be at least on par uh, with this Batman 66, if not better than it. And I hope that it's uh, something like uh, Iron Maiden or Black Knight Sword of Rage. Either one of those two would just be, oh my God, nut-bustingly good. <laughs> I would I would never leave my V-Pin. A, a seven-hour stream would seriously seem like a short stream. I'll take that ball lock. That mystery, let's go. Ah, damn it. That's interesting. I guess that assumed it was like main and the whole code was ripped from the ROM 100%. No, so on these like ultra modern tables, um, because they're because of the, the system that they're on, the spike two. I think it's Spike 2. Um, the ROMs actually run on Linux. And so there are no... There's... Because VPX runs on Windows, there's no way to pull those ROMs and get them to work... The Linux ROMs and get them to work on Windows. I'm probably wrong when I say that because it's very technical. But I believe that is a simplified explanation. So the reason why uh, Ghostbusters is a forbidden table is because the way that they did that was essentially to rip the ROM from another game that had already converted the ROM. I'm not going to say what the game is, but they were able to to rip some files from that already existing game to use in vpx and a cease and desist order was issued and that pretty much issued that that pretty much ended it there um so now if they want to create these ultra modern tables they have to do it from scratch which means that they have to shoot every single shot um, and notate what that shot does, how many points it's worth, how many times you have to shoot it for this result, and then manually script that. 
in tens of thousands of lines of code manually. So you want to talk about reverse engineering a table? That's literally what they have to do. And for something like Batman 66, with all these different villains um, and how deep this gameplay is, all the different modes and stuff and the way to complete them, that's a huge job. Huge job. Um, and so the, the fact that somebody, the fishbowl and Mr. H went through the trouble of doing that and then people like MPT3K um, play tested it to make sure that it was accurate. I mean, <laughs> just to play this table, I'm extremely lucky. Um, now this table is available at an arcade that's downtown about uh, a 15 minute uh, drive from me. So it's not too bad, but to be able to play this table on my VPN for free and know that it's 98% accurate, um, to the to the code and the ROM that exists for it is amazing. Give me a ball lock off of that. <laughs> These guys do a great job of replicating everything. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, they, they hand write all these codes. And I believe, I'm not 100% positive, but I believe that um, Black Knight Sword of Rage and Iron Maiden are in the works. So yeah, if they can pull off the, the same thing to the same accuracy and level uh, of this Batman 66 or uh, what's what's the other one that was custom scripted? Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, which is about 95% accurate. Like, oh my God, <laughs> just absolutely amazing stuff. So that was ball three. We only got to 25. That's nasty. That's nasty. We, we, we can do better than that. We, we can definitely do better than that. I think we need some more to drink. I think that's what that is. <laughs> hmm. I shouldn't have done that. Oh, man. Now, you mind if I am 
super honest with you guys right now. Not that I would ever tell you guys a lie. But. I am toasted right now. <laughs> I am like, I'm not like laying on the pinball machine and like the world is still moving when I close my eyes. It's not, it's not that bad, but it's getting there. <laughs> Thankfully, nobody else has a beer redemption uh, so, so that way I don't have to chug any more beers. So I'm thankful for that, but yes, man, um, I think, I think seven hours is my longest solo stream. I think I did. I think I did nine hours with um, with Cyborg Johnny um, when he was joining me for my dream for my streams dreams <laughs> uh, when he was joining me for my streams. So it is six twenty in the morning here, and yesterday morning I was up at eight thirty. So. So what, in a couple of hours, I'll have been up, been awake for 24 hours. So I'm put, putting in the work for you guys and flipping sip. What's up? Just getting off work. Coming to relax with some try to tilt pinball. Games that I've played. Oh, man. Um, I don't know. Cammy's been here for most of them. Uh, you would ask me that. Um, just past the seventh hour of my stream. <laughs> um, okay, so counting it backwards, we're playing Batman 66, obviously. Um, before that was Stars. Um, what else did we play? Did we play Creature? No, we didn't, we didn't play Creature. We played Guardians of the Galaxy. I know that. Um, what else did we play? We played the old school EM. Was that Stars? Yeah, that, that was Stars. That was the only old school one that we played. Um, God dang, what else did we play? Hope you don't have work or anything important today. Nah, all I got to do is um, go visit my mom um, and go to the grocery store for her. I've got to take my uh, my PIP controller uh, for my brew rig to the locksmith because there's a key um that I have misplaced and I need that key to actually turn off, uh, to turn off and on the safety interlock to energize the system. Um, and I have misplaced that key. So I have to take it to the locksmith to get a new key made for it, or I can't operate my brew rig. Uh, so I got to do that tomorrow. So I got to go to the grocery store for my mom get a new safety interlock key for my brew rig um, at 6.30 I gotta head out for uh, league night at 7 o'clock um, yeah that's pretty much it <laughs> uh, uh I checked the VOD. Medieval Madness looked fun. Yes, I did play some Medieval Madness. Yes. Um, God, what else did I play? I feel like I played a bunch of stuff. Um, but yeah, I did, did play some Medieval Madness uh, for sure. 
I was gonna play Elvira, but I don't I don't think I got around to it. There was something that I played for a long time. But I'm I'm, I'm hella drunk, so so tonight's um uh, stream is actually split into two parts because I took a like a potty break, a bio break, and for some weird reason when I came back and switched scenes, my my uh, my stream just straight up crashed. So it says that this current stream has been running for two hours and thirty minutes, uh, forty seven minutes. Um. But the previous stream was like four hours because I think I started streaming just before 11. <coughs> oh, I missed it. been playing the crap out of NBA fast break uh, I think I might actually have that one but it's not loaded in pin up popper um, I tend to, to keep a relatively uh, short list of games um, I'm not one of these uh, people who like have 800 games or a thousand games on my cab um, I just tend to keep the games on there that I'm actually interested in playing and learning um, and then just play those over and over uh, to see how good I can get on them which is usually not very good but it's fun to do <laughs> There are a few games where I have some some modicum of confidence on. Uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon, uh, World Cup Soccer 94, uh, Congo. Um, so there's there's a few games where I feel like I'm I know what's going on and I know what to do. But most of the others are just there for fun so I can uh, guzzle beer <laughs> and play some pinball like I was hanging out with my friends, which is exactly what I'm doing now at 6 o'clock in the morning. What time is it uh, where you are? I know for Cami, I think it's about uh, what... Uh, 10 o'clock in the evening, I think. About, about 9.30, maybe 10 o'clock. Whoa, what a savage drain. <laughs> oh, I played some uh, uh, for quite a while. I actually played some Back to the Future. You know what? Let's let's do some rage inducing gameplay. This friggin' ridiculous ass flipper gap. Uh, <laughs> so my wife was actually concerned. She was sitting in the living room while I was playing this game and she was genuinely concerned that I was punching. I was literally like double fist pow like like just punching the the uh, the lockdown bar and and she was like you're gonna break your glass so like that that's how much this game just <sighs> Mickey Cammy said yeah about 10 30 yeah
Bob wants to give me more credits. It's because this game knows. This game knows the deal. ready to see me rage the hell out <laughs> if you're not ready then I'll go ahead and apologize to you if you are ready if you played this before then you already know look at that bullshit flipper gap is wide as your mama's teeth Come on now. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, that's some bullshit. Oh, man. If I'm gonna get that hard in that, then then I'll, I'm at least I'm at least look pretty. I'm at least look pretty. If I'm gonna I'm gonna get that done that hard in the booty, uh, I'm at least look pretty. All right. Let's go, come on. What kind of scores are we gonna get tonight? Ow! Not those kind of scores. Ah, I can't even find the button. <laughs> Ask my wife about that. Anyway. <laughs> All right, so we got one ball locked. What kind of bullshit? Okay, at least we got the second chance. What? Okay, maybe my reaction time is a little slow because hashtag beer. 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 So there's one seltzer down. Let's crack open another one. Mm. See, all these other streamers that can't seem to handle their liquor. I don't know what's wrong with them. I don't know what's wrong with them. They're amateurs.
All right, there we go. Ball two locked. Let's go. So now we got to hit this thing like a freaking million times. Now, you piece of sh I was the biggest Doctor Who fan when I was a kid. The newer series, which made it super popular, kind of turned me off. You know what? I started with the newer series. With the, with the dude with the uh, slick back hair. Uh, and then David Tennant. And then uh, Matt, what's his name? Freaking awesome. Like, the, the whole, like, pseudo love story between Rose and uh, David Tennant's version of the Doctor. Like, I was just like, yes, yes. And then when it came out that that, that one lady was like, um, she was Rose's mom. Like, she was from the future. Like, it, it was just... Oh, man. I just love that whole storyline. But in a mob being, okay, so I'm going to say something. Some people will be like, oh, he's a misogynist. I'm not. But when they did the whole woman doctor thing, which I'm not opposed to. Woman doctor, I don't really care. Doctor is a doctor, whatever. But the storylines that they chose were just... It, they, they were just they were just stupid which is really ridiculous to say because when you think about Doctor Who as, as a whole it's, it's really hard to call something stupid when the whole entire thing is kind of ridiculous right but this was truly stupid all I want for Doctor Who and I, I, I cannot think of his name I probably should know his name do you know the dude who played Moss in the IT crowd? The the black dude with the with the big poofy hair, right? The black dude. He he played a character named Moss in the IT crowd. You can watch it on Netflix. Like to me, that dude is is the living embodiment of the Doctor. Like what better Doctor? Would there be than that guy? Ah. It just became formulaic. Well, I mean, let's be honest. The doctor was always... Formulate that Doctor Who was always formulate. Damn it, ball went already. Man, <laughs> Richard, Aoda. yeah, yes, yes, yes. I know what you're talking about. Doesn't matter if you missed them, it's okay. Yes, that dude, yes. He should be a doctor. 10 times old, over, he should be a doctor. He would be everything, he could embody Everything that the doctor is quirky, uh, fish out of water, uh, super smart, but makes no sense. Like he could do all of those things, but they, they just won't do it. And I don't know why. Beast New York in the house. 
Wow, super late or early stream. What up? Man. <laughs> uh, no, it is uh, not a super early stream. Not a super late stream. Uh, besides a stream crashing in the middle, this is a... Uh, how long have we been streaming? Uh, just before 11... So this is, what time is it? 6.40? So this is seven hours and about 50 minutes. Seven hours and 50, 55 minutes that we've been streaming. So, so uh, I've been rocking this for a little while. And been having a blast, quite frankly. It's very rare that I stream this long. But friends like... Uh, I make it cami just make it super easy where I don't even notice the time. But Beast New York, I'm so happy that you're here. How are you doing? Are you just getting up? Are you about to go to bed? Are you getting home? Where are you in the world? What time is it there? Seems like a lame question, but I like to know where my friends are from. <laughs> Beast New York is hosting me. Oh my God. Thank you so much for doing that. I appreciate that. Also, I didn't know at least 90% of the episodes were based in modern London. The old series spanned the world and the universe. <laughs> Beast New York is like, uptime. Yeah, he'd be, he'd be the coolest doctor. I think so. I think, well, I don't know if he could be the coolest doctor, but to me, the, the gold standard for doctors is David Tennant. Absolutely fantastic as a doctor. So if I think he would be at least as good as David Tennant. And I think he could be at least as good as the one that had the crazy scarf. Because that, that's my second favorite doctor. David Tennant is my first. The one with the, the crazy long scarf. That's my second favorite doctor. Beast New York says, I've never caught you at this hour. 7.40 a.m. I have been up New York Eastern time. Uh, shift, might as well get a drink. Heck yeah. I mean cereal. Oops. No, 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 bro. Come on. It's okay. Have a drink with me, bro. Have a drink. Cheers, bro. I I'm drinking this uh, hard seltzer. Uh, I did 12 beers, one hard seltzer, and this is my 14th, 14th uh, beverage. And I almost dropped it on the floor. Woo! <laughs> Let's go. So, yeah, it doesn't matter if you're having cereal or a drink. Let's go. Let's let's have some fun. I almost said, why can't I get this damn lock? But I know why I can't get this damn lock. It's because <laughs> blame it on the al 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 alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> but but we're having fun, so you know that's that's okay. That is okay. And Cammy is back. <laughs> she probably didn't leave, but you know, if you have a uh, loss of internet connection or something. Uh, it's going to do that every time you re-in your chat. I wish, I think there's a way that I can actually stop that from happening. 
where it will only do like it will do that like one time per stream. But I also am aware that people hop in and out of my stream, especially if it's a, a busy time, like a you know, Saturday night, Friday night, something like that. You know, there's lots of people streaming. So I don't get mad when people are like, you know, he's sucking ass with his scoreboard right now. So I'm going to go check out, you know, Don't Panic Flip or somebody else. And then they come back to see what I'm up to. And I want to know when they when they come back and when they return, right? Ah, we got captured. That's what happened when you've been drinking. Don't uh, don't try to run from Daleks when you've been drinking. <laughs> I blame my mobile hotspot. It's either that or my JP pin. Reminded me to go back and play another game. Hey, I'm not going to fault you for that, Kami. Uh, the choice between playing a Jurassic Park pinball machine or watching some drunk guy play pinball horribly. Um, I mean, I know which one I would do. So the fact that you're here talking to me. I love it. It's all heart, hearts emojis. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for sacrificing uh, Jurassic Park pinball time to come hang out with me and watch my shitty stream. <laughs> so, so thank you very much for that. All right. So let's actually try to get to uh, Dalek Multiball. So we got to hit this thing like five times. we gotta do get this up in the hole there we go Dalek multi ball started and it looks like we already lost one lost two fuck you multi ball hey look at that at least we got one Dalek we got one <laughs> the video isn't skipping a beat before the Jurassic Park arrived I had my three V pins set up against the back wall so anytime I played them I couldn't see the TV <laughs> now all three of them in the JP are along the sidewall so I can watch TV and play any of them and I have twitch going on the TV oh man that's a sweet setup so you basically got a wall of pinball machines and then you can still watch Twitch. That is that is entertainment to the max. But then I also know if I ask a question and you don't respond, I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. You chose Jurassic Park instead of me. You know what? I have to admit that that, that, that kind of hurts a little bit. It kind of hurts a little bit. Because you're not you're not devoting 100% to me. But you know what? You know what? I understand. Because quite honestly, if I had a JP in my living room and I was watching Don't Panic Flip or, or MPT3K, I probably wouldn't be 100% 
watching the stream. I, I'd probably be playing some Jurassic Park. I, I, I can't really fault you for that. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, as you know. Oh no, I let that just, I let it just slide off. Oh, I'm a bastard. I'm a piece of shit. Let's go, video mode, let's do it. Jump, jump, double jump, double jump, double jump, double jump. Yes, you can't catch me, fool. I've been running for the cops my whole life. Oh, come on, that's some bulls. Beast New York wants to know, have I done any more challenges with players like Paladin? Unfortunately, I have not, but I, I had some real issues uh, through the month of January and February. Um, I lost my dog. I was trying to study for uh, a new certification at work that was gonna make me a little extra money, and I failed that. Uh, I had some my own personal health issues and then I've been taking care of my mom and her health issues as well. So I just kind of fell off the the streaming bandwagon and I'm still inconsistent, um, which is unfortunate um, because I, I have so many people who follow me and, and I feel like they depend on me for you know, for this late night entertainment. And I, I I haven't been providing, you know, what they asked me to do. So I feel bad about that. Um, so I'm hoping the month of March, you know, I can kind of get my shit together <laughs> um, uh, and, and, and provide a, a little more. I'm no longer going to be streaming like, five nights a week like I was trying to do that that's just that that's just not feasible uh, for me with all the other things that I have to do um, you know when it comes to like taking care of my mom and you know st stuff like that I, I just I just don't really have the time for it like I used to um, So I really need to get into my uh, Twitch settings and modify my schedule so that you guys can actually see um, when I will be streaming. So like I've been saying all night, I do really appreciate it. Um, you all who have continued to follow me and support me, um, even though I've been kind of missing in action uh, for a little bit. Um, Oh, damn it. So, I I, I hope to do uh, more challenges, more uh, battles with the uh, Paladin, because that is, that is extremely fun. <laughs> it is a lot of fun. Um, so, I, I really look forward to that. Uh, so, I'm hoping once, once I kind of get stuff organized, um, that I can that I can make a more consistent time for that and maybe do that a couple of times a month um, with the with the challenges. Oh, straight down the middle. <laughs> I'll be ready without the gin. 
<laughs> You're here when we need you, the hero we need. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, Paladin. <laughs> And you know what? The 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 Jin special edition episode is one of the uh, one of the greatest episodes of Try to Tell Pinball uh, ever. <laughs> uh, when I look at my stats, like people are still watching that. <laughs> people are still watching that on YouTube. It's freaking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I think that's amazing. So, uh, whether Jin or not, just playing pinball with, with my friend, is oh my god, it's it's the best. I mean, yeah, playing pinball for other people to watch is is great, and and that's awesome, but. Playing with somebody, you know, and knowing that they're, you know, <laughs> a couple thousand miles away, like that's, that's that's truly magic. Thank you, internet gods, for for being able to make that happen, right? Um, but I just have so much fun doing that, and I'm trying to think of like new challenges, like you know, okay. What kind of multi-ball could could we start? You know, what you know first to, to get this you know particular score. Like all of that stuff sounds super cool. <laughs> oh, you still haven't watched the vod? You talking about of the gin night? You still haven't watched the vod? Oh my god, bro! <laughs> Oh, you need to watch that. If anything, watch the last uh, 45 minutes. You'll see in there, if you pay attention, it sounds really nice, but I'm actually trying to stop the stream. <laughs> For real, I'm actually trying to like stop the stream because I keep asking you, hey, if you don't want to play anymore, you know, it's, it, it's okay. Sounds like you need to uh, go to bed, lay down somewhere and rest. Like, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I had had so much fun. <laughs> Try to stand pinball, exactly. <laughs> the gin night. Your head hurts just thinking about it, huh? Yeah, no doubt. Well, imagine how I feel right now. Do you know how good I'm gonna sleep when I turn off these cameras and lights? It's gonna be ridiculous, bro. <laughs> he slept right next to the cab. Yeah, that might be what I'm doing. I just had a dozen beers plus uh, a 12 ounce can of seltzer and I'm working on my second can of hard seltzer. So we're, we're literally 50. 14 beers in and I've been streaming for going on eight hours so yeah yeah can you, can you say old Chris is gonna be sleeping good I hope you can sleep. You can handle it better than I. <laughs> Try to stand fucking hilarious. Try to stand pinball. <laughs> well, Paladin, like I was saying earlier, you know, since I can't be invited or I'm not a part of the pinball network, I thought about starting my own collab channel uh, of, uh, ooh, that, that was weird, but cool. I thought about starting my own channel and just calling it like 
you know, uh, late night drunk pinball. And like, who wants to watch a bunch of drunk people play pinball? Uh, apparently, a lot of people. <laughs> Woo, that was fast. Wow, that was a smoker. What? Oh my God, this is crazy. <laughs> I handle it better than you. Um, let's just say that maybe I am just uh, I, I don't, I don't want to be mean when I say it, so don't don't take it as me. Because uh, I don't know how to say it because my brain is a little bit fuzzy. Maybe I just am a better showman. Because believe me, I am. <laughs> I just, I just wear it maybe a little bit better. <laughs> and who is redeeming John Cena? Paladin Arcade redeeming the John Cena. Beast of York says that's exactly. Uh, what I'm here for, support the people. There's two funny pin drinkers I've watched. Definitely will be good if you do that as well. Yeah, so I think that there should be like the pin drinkers network or drunk pinball late night, you know, late night drunk pinball, you know, where it's like, hey, you know, starting at 11 o'clock or some shit, you know, it's like, watch your favorite pin, pin streamers just, just get shit faced and wasted. I might be the only one on the channel, but it'll be an amazing channel. <laughs> People will definitely, it will be the, uh, it will be the water cooler conversation. They'll be like, yo, did you watch Tilt last night? Oh my God. I don't know what the hell he was drinking, but damn. Like, we, we need to, like, have an intervention call somebody, maybe. I'm not sure what to do. Okay. The only thing I would say, this is an amazing version, uh, of an amazing re-theme of the Godzilla table. But the real Godzilla does not play this fast. We go give me that ram thank you i'll take that ram too thank you ah <laughs> stack the cans into a wizard staff Drink and drain. That might be a porno reference. <laughs> Drink and drain. Uh, um, yeah, that's, um, yes. What, we got no coins in this bitch. Why do we have to put coins in here? This is, this is a virtual pinball. This shit is free. Cheated sipping ball 
Sip pinball. Sip pinball. Sip pinball. I like it. I like it. Oh, I got shafted on that one. What? We're out laning left and right. Literally, left and right. <laughs> that ain't fair. Scoop on one. Scoop on two. <coughs> Excuse me. I keep waiting to see like destruction jackpot. Come on, you see that bullshit. <laughs> Hit your shots. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm trying to do. But disable is uh, cheating something often. What? That ball teleported to the out lane. <laughs> Skills and shots. No, not you. Throwing titles around drinking streams. I like that. Hit your shots is great. Hit your shots is great. Hit your shots is a great, a great, great title. Because it's a double entendre. It means two things at once. Damn, look at the boy. He hitting combos like silky smooth. <laughs> But for no points, let's be real.
I'm still waiting on that, uh, that, you know, that eight, nine, ten hour paladin stream. Just playing Creature from the Black Lagoon on Pinball FX3 for like 10 hours. <laughs> Shot glasses, highball sh <laughs> shirts. I don't know if the uh, if the wife would be okay with that. Oh, wee! Try to stay in pinball. <laughs> High score battles. If you lose, you got to drink. down the middle that hurt that hurt my sensitive sensibilities no extra balls oh damn did he just get hit with a nut sack? Did he just get hit with an axe in the nut sack? Is that what I saw? Got hit with an axe in the nut sack. And then, as he was screaming from getting hit with an axe in the nut sack, he, he took an axe blow to the head. Is that what I just saw? Because that's fucked up. That's fucked up. That's... <laughs> Woo -wee. Man, <laughs> I know, right? Damn. does look like I am the last pinball streamer. Man. Guys, I have got a caller right here. I don't even know who to send you to. I mean, anybody got some votes? I mean, I I'd love to see you somewhere, but if y'all want to see pinball, I mean, it it's pretty much over. I'm the last one. Man. <laughs> I mean, y'all want to go see Amareth in a in a bathing suit? I, I, I don't know. Wow, I, I would have to say that now. I am, I am toasted. I am toasty with butter on it. Maybe you sprinkle some sugar and cinnamon on it. I, I am, I am toasted. I am French toasted. I am done. <laughs> I would say that that's uh, that's eight hours of hella fun time, but I am done. I feel like I haven't bit my knees in, <laughs> in days. I can only imagine when I sit down on this couch over here, things are gonna be popping and cracking. <laughs> I'm gonna sit down, sound like an ant. Mm, I always like going south. Feels like going downhill. 
Man. I outlasted everyone I did. I did. I went till, what time is it? 7.15 in the morning. Oh, my God. You guys have been absolutely fantastic. <laughs> and I would still stream if I didn't have errands to run in the morning. Like, I'm literally going to have to wake up in, like, three hours so that I can go visit the locksmith and then go visit my mom for a few hours and then prepare to go to league night. So, <laughs> like, woo, if I don't stream tonight after league night, please forgive me. You know why. <laughs> if you didn't get enough tonight, I can't help you. <laughs> I'm surprised no German or Australian uh, pinball streamers are on the raid. I know, right? Uh, I, I know there's a couple of uh, German pinball streamers, but I don't think they usually start up until about 10 or 11, my time at least. Um, <laughs> yeah, less than everyone, as I take another chug, right? I mean, oh my God. Quite honestly, if I could, I would literally just like, go to intermission for like 30 minutes and then come back. <laughs> but I just, I really need to sit down, do my cool down period. And I'm pretty sure if I did that, I would just, just, just be out as soon as I did. So the only thing that is keeping me standing at this cab is, is literally just adrenaline. And the fact that I'm having fun, which you can tell, <laughs> But a smile on my face. Uh, but as soon as I turn this off and like go sit down on my couch, it's lights out, buddy. I'm telling you. <laughs> mm. Oh man, I wish I knew somebody. Uh... Oh my God, Paladin Arcade cheering with the biddies. And just to let you know, Paladin. I have, for the first time ever, a bit goal, which is gonna buy a beer hat. And I'm hoping to make enough um, to get the Viking beer hat, which has like horns and it holds two cans of beer with the, um, with the hose to the spigot. I'm hoping to get that one. I think it takes about 1,600 biddies to get just a regular hard hat version with the, you know, like you see at baseball games with the beer with the beer can holders. But the Viking one with the big ass horns, that one is, is about 4,000 bits. So I'm hoping to raise that by the end of the month. And then uh, for the month of uh, uh, April, I will be on stream every time. Mm, excuse me. <laughs> That's a lot of beer. It's a lot of carbonation. But I will be on stream every time just with beers mounted in the Viking horns, ready to go. Valhalla, take my drunken ass. <laughs> so, so thank you very much for the biddies. You helped contribute towards that end, and I appreciate it. <laughs> Kevin says we appreciate you staying on for all of us and I really hope you get some quality sleep while you can you know what uh, if I can sleep like my boy Rocky down here on his doggy bed I think I'll be alright cause this fool is knocked out he is knocked out <laughs> yeah it's absolutely uh, matter of fact let me see if I can show y'all exactly what I'm talking about uh, so let's let's do this let's let's go to my I score board uh, go to yeah we'll, we'll do this come on take me there all right so that what you see on the screen so that's the basic uh, beer hat is going to cost about 1600 bits to get that. But 
what we really want, what we really want. So this is 4,000 bits, right? The Viking helmet, the Viking helmet with double beer cans. Come on, y'all. I know that I, I know that and plus it fits a 24 inch head. It'll even fit a big ass head. So I know, I know that we can do it. I know we can get there by the end of the month. It's going to be awesome. So just, just imagine, right? Just imagine mounted right up here. Bam. Right like that. Right. It's hands free. Drunk pinball. You know you want it. You know you want it. Let's get there. Because my wife will never approve this. <laughs> my wife would never approve this out of the family budget. <laughs> so you guys have to help me get there with your bits. <laughs> so Paladin, thank you very much for helping me get there. Who else is dropping some bits? Paladin. <laughs> He's making it rain with more bits. I appreciate it, my man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Every bit gets us closer to our drunken goal. <laughs> oh, man. We're we are going to have so much fun in the month of April. Uh, I think it's going to be fantastic. <laughs> but for right now, oh, my God. I wish I had somebody to send you to. But there's no more pinball streamers. And... Quite honestly, I don't feel like sending you to a hot tub streamer. So, I'm just going to call it there. My name is Chris. This is Try to Tilt Pinball. Try to stay standing. Pinball. And I am going to go get some sleep now at what time? 7.21 in the morning. So, thank you all for being here and hanging out with me. I had a blast. And I hope to see you all real soon. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And have a great night wherever you are or a great morning, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are in the morning. Uh, I love you guys and I'll see you next time. <laughs> oh my God, how do I turn this thing off? That's how I know I'm drunk. Where, where's my mouse at? Uh, let's do, yeah, let's do like that. <laughs> oh.